guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another causal inference struggle. Today I'm talking about panel data methods or difference in differences estimation. Again, the point of going through these videos is so that as you are trying to estimate a causal model, you can understand exactly what your method is doing, how you're getting your estimates, as well as the assumptions that are going into those methods. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and jump right into it. The way we're going to start talking about difference differences is from this motivating example. Again, we're going to go back to talking about the effect of adopting the cat on stress level. So here are two people. It's going to be Bill and I. And you can see our stress levels measured from 0 to 10 by year. So 2018, 19, 20, and 2021. Notice that in 2021 that I adopt Milo. So maybe my stress in 2018 was a 6. 2019 it was a 5. 2020 was a 9. And then in 2021, when I'm treated, it becomes a three. So we are trying to estimate this effect on stress level. If I take these same numbers and just add a couple more things, maybe this will make it easier to see what the effect of adopting a cat on my stress level is. First of all, you see that there is always a plus two difference between Bill and I. I'm always two points more stressed than Bill, again, measured from zero to 10. So if we were to estimate what my stress level would have been had I not adopted Milo in 2021, you might say, well, if Bill's stress level is 6, then maybe you think that my stress level would have been 8. Otherwise, my predicted Y0 or my stress if not treated would be 8. But instead, my actual stress level was 3. So that means that my estimated treatment effect would be minus 5 because 3 or my Y1 minus my predicted Y0 of 8 gives me a treatment effect of minus 5. And this is the basic idea of the difference differences. We're going to find out what the treatment was in a given year. And we are going to use this pre-period, the time before treatment between the treated people, aka me, I'm the treated person because I adopted a cat, and the control group or the control people, aka Bill, who never adopted a cat, to try and get an estimate for this Y0 for the treatment group so that I can use this treatment value to estimate the average treatment effect for the treated group. Just to make this a little more rigorous, a little more mathematical, let's talk about this with potential outcome notation. We already said that basically the way we get to this treatment effect of minus five, well, there is an effect at treatment of minus three, right? In this treatment period, I am three points less stressed than Bill. There was already a two point existing difference in the pre-period. So we put those two together and we get an average treatment effect equal to minus five. I'll just put the minus in here to make it a little more clear. The way I like to put this in potential outcome notation is it's going to be the expected value of Y given you're treated in the post period or after treatment minus the average Y for the control people again in the post period. Post period in this case is 2021 after I've adopted the cat. Then we're going to subtract another difference, hence why it's called difference in differences. The difference we're going to subtract is the difference in Y between the treated people in the pre-period. For example, this is the average stress level or my average stress level on average in the pre-period, so 2018 through 2021, minus the average stress level or E of Y in the pre-period for the control people. So that's Bill's average stress level in 2018 through 2020. So just putting those numbers back together, this difference here, the difference between Bill and I in the post period or after I adopt the cat is minus three. I'm three points less stressed than Bill. The average stress difference between Bill and I in the pre-period we said was two because this is a two, this is a two, and this is a two. So the average of three twos is just a two. So that means that I'm going to subtract the two and that's going to give me a treatment effect of minus five. You'll notice that when we did this estimate, that two came from the fact that we assumed that since Bill and I were always two stress level points different in the pre-period, that that would have continued into 2021 because that's how we got this eight. But instead, I was at three and we took this difference to find my treatment effect of adopting a cat. What if Bill and I were not always consistently different? Well, then you might say, well, we could still just take this average and sort of use that to approximate what your Y0 would have been in treatment. But another thing we need to worry about is what else was happening in 2021. For example, maybe I quit my job. Maybe I work in a high stress job. And in 2021, I adopted a cat and I switched jobs or I left my job to go back to school. If that was the case, that would have also reduced my stress level most likely. You can also think of it as maybe I did something in 2021 
aside from adopting myla that would have increased my stress level. So those types of factors are called confounders and specifically they're confounders that are correlated with the outcome variable or stress level in this case. And those are things that could affect the actual three that we got here. And anything that affects this three number is going to affect our average treatment effect estimate. Similarly, anything that messes up or affects these common trends in the pre-period is going to affect what I estimate as my counterfactual or my Y0 had I not adopted the cap. And anything that affects my Y0, anything that affects my stress level if I had not adapted my low, is going to affect the difference between this three and this eight, and therefore is going to affect my estimated average treatment effect, which we got as minus five. This assumption that Bill and I are always different by the same sort of amount, that we follow sort of the same trend in our stress level in the pre-period, it's called the common trends assumption. And that common trends assumption is what the difference in differences estimator relies on in order for us to say the causal impact of adopting a cat on my stress level that was a causal impact with an average treatment effect of minus five. I'll talk about how that breaks down graphically in a second, but first I wanna talk about how we actually estimate it because when we actually estimate a difference in differences, we are hardly ever doing actual averages. Most of the time we are going to plug this into a regression. The regression is gonna look like this, where my outcome, my stress level, is going to be a function of these betas where beta zero is a constant, I'm going to include this variable called treatment, which is just a one if I'm in the treatment group and a zero if not. It's also going to include this variable called post, which is gonna be one if we're in the post period or zero if we're in the pre-period. Then I'm going to include this other variable, this interaction term of, of treatment times post, which is a one if I'm in the treated group and it's the post period and zero otherwise. I've just listed those here just to hopefully make it easier to keep track of. So now with that regression in mind, let's talk about what each of those betas mean. And the way I'm going to talk about what each of these betas mean is I'm going to take some differences. So first in green, let's try to figure out what beta one represents in this regression. The way I'm going to figure out what beta one represents in this regression, is first I'm going to consider the treated group in the pre-period. So if you're in the treated group, one of treat is gonna be one, but one of post is gonna be zero and treat times post is gonna be zero. So you're gonna get beta zero because everyone gets beta zero. You're also gonna get beta one. So this is going to be your estimate of the stress level of treated in the pre-period. If you're in the control group in the pre-period, you just get beta zero because you're not in the treated group, you're not post, and you're certainly not treat times post. And so then if I take the difference between the treatment and the control in the pre-period, I'm gonna get beta one. I'm gonna say that beta one represents the selection bias between the control and the treatment group in this study. I'm gonna show a graph on the next slide, which will make this a lot clearer, so just bear with me. But for now, I just want you to understand that beta one is representing the selection in the study. For beta two, I'm going to look at the control group in the post period versus the pre-period. The control group in the post period, you get beta zero. You're not treated, so you don't get beta one, but you are in the post period, so you do get beta two. For the control group in the pre-period, we said you just get beta zero. So that difference is just beta two. And I'm going to represent to you that beta two is going to represent the time trend. Again, graph on the next slide I think will be super helpful. But just for now, understand beta two is supposed to be the time trend. To get beta three, it's gonna be a little trickier. And the reason it's gonna be a little trickier is because we are going to need a difference of differences in order to get beta three. That's the whole point of why this is called difference in differences. So let's look at the treatment in the post period versus treatment group in the pre-period. If you are in the treatment group in the post period, you get every single one of these betas because all of those one functions are one. And if you're the treatment group in the pre-period, you get beta zero and you get beta one. You don't get beta two, you don't get beta three. So if I take the difference, notice I get beta two plus beta three. We know that beta two is supposed to be the time trend. So beta two plus beta three must be the treatment effect plus the time trend. So if I take this beta two plus beta three and I subtract beta two, I will get beta three. I'm going to represent to you that beta three, therefore must be the treatment effect. For those of you who were waiting for this graph ever since I talked about beta one, here's this graph. There's a lot of things on this graph. Let's walk through it slowly. So first the setup on this X axis, it's just time, pre-period and post-period. This Y axis is gonna be stress level. And then in pink, I'm going to plot the treatment group. And in blue, I'm gonna plot the control group. So the control group in the pre-period, this is Bill. 
This is Bill's stress level before the treatment. Notice that maybe in 2021, people were more stressed anyway. So this is Bill's stress level in the post period, even though he didn't adopt a cat, things are happening in 2021. So Bill's just a little more stressed than he was in the pre-period, not because of any particular reason. This is just what's happening to everyone in the control group. Treatment group in the pre-period, they have a higher level of stress. And then after the treatment group adopts a cat, after I adopt a cat, the stress level goes down to here. Now let's talk about this in terms of our regression, which I've just put in this little box for ease of reference. So this control group in the pre-period, Notice that this is just our constant, right? Everyone gets a beta zero. This is the lowest stress level that exists overall. And this treatment group is higher in terms of their stress than the control group in the pre-period. And so that is selection. That is how different the treatment and the control group are in the period without any intervention. And we said that that was equal to beta one, which again, you can see because I just take the average stress of the treatment group in the pre-period minus the average stress level of the control group in the pre-period. Now, if we look post-adoption, so after treatment, you can see that the control group went up a little bit. And so we say that's the time trend and we said the time trend was beta two. Another way of thinking about this is if there were no change, I would expect the control group to just keep chugging along right at this level, but they didn't, they went up a little bit. And so we call that the time trend and that was beta two. Notice that that also means that we would expect the treatment group to have that same sort of time trend. And I put that time trend predicted treatment stress level here in green. This pink line here, that's what the treatment group was actually at. That's their actual average stress level. And that's going to be equal to the treatment effect, which we said was beta three. Another way to think about this is that if I look at the difference between the treatment group in the pre period and the post period, the difference between this pink line in the pre-period and this pink line in the post-period is the treatment effect plus the time trend. But the treatment effect that I want to back out of this is the fact that it reduced their stress by this full amount here, not this tiny little amount here. And the way I can indicate the time trend is I look at the difference in the control group between their average stress level in the post-period and in the pre-period. So I know this is a little confusing, if you've got questions about this graph, make sure to comment below and I will do my best to clarify those. But hopefully this gives you some basic intuition for how the difference in differences estimator works and why you get the estimate you do. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.